Good evening, and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection. Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins in your order of worship. We're on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O creator and giver of life, who crowned your martyr Maria Stoptova with glory and gave her as an example of service to the suffering and poor, even unto death. Teach us to love Christ and our neighbors, and thereby battle injustice and evil with the light of the resurrection. For Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <clears throat> reading from the book of Judges. Deborah and Barak, son of Abinah, sang on that day, saying, When locks are long in Israel, and the people offer themselves willingly, bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, to the Lord I will sing. I will make melody to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Edom, the earth trembled, and the heavens poured, the clouds indeed poured water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai, before the Lord, the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shagmar, son of Ammoth, in the days of Jael, caravans ceased and travelers kept to the byways. The peasantry prospered in Israel. They grew fat on thunder because you arose, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. When new gods were chosen, when war was in the gates, was shield or spear to be seen among 40,000 in Israel, my heart goes out to the commanders of Israel who offered themselves willingly among the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 126. Let's read it in unison. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. 
This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This evening we celebrate the life and ministry of Maria Skopskova, a relatively new addition to the calendar of saints, listed as a monastic and martyr on the church's calendar. And while she did certainly take monastic vows, she does not fit the traditional mold of a nun. Maria was born to an aristocratic family in 1892 in Russia, in what is now Latvia, and was given the name Elizaveta, or Liza for short. She was raised by a devout Orthodox household, but after the death of her father, a teenage Liza lost her faith. She and her mother soon moved to St. Petersburg and became involved with radical intellectual and literary circles. She was drawn to the radical movement that declared it was working to better the world and the lives of common people, and she married one such radical in 1910, a union that only lasted three years. After the end of her marriage and her growing disillusion with the radical movement's lack of progress, she was drawn back to Christianity and devoted a great deal of time to study. She married her second husband, Daniel Skopstov, shortly after the Bolshevik Resolution. The couple emigrated to Paris in 1923. Three years later, their youngest child died and she separated from her second husband. After this, Liza began to focus her energy and time on working with those who were in need those who had been, she had been drawn to helping in the first place, as well as continuing to explore her faith. Liza's bishop encouraged her to become a nun, which after some hesitation and with much reassurance that she would not have to be cloistered, she did, taking the name Maria. Her calling was responding with love to the needs of others while trying to create better social structures. The ideals she had always held lived out. She could often be found sitting in front of a cafe with a glass of beer in one hand and a cigarette in the other, talking with all kinds of people about their lives, their troubles, or about God, wearing full monastic robes. Maria turned a rented house in Paris into a convent, or more accurately, a place with an open door for refugees, the needy, and the lonely. It was also a center for intellectual and theological discussion. For Maria, these two elements, service to the poor and theology, went hand in hand. When the Nazis took Paris in 1940, Maria began to provide a safe haven for Jewish Parisians. Many came to her hoping to receive baptismal certificates, which they hoped would prevent their arrest or deportation. Her chaplain, Father Dimitri, gladly provided them. As the occupation became more dangerous and community began hiding Jewish people, providing shelter as well as helping many to escape. Eventually, that work was discovered by the Gestapo, Maria and her family and her chaplain, Father Dimitri, were all taken into custody. Maria was sent to the concentration camp in Ravensbrück, Germany. While she was in prison, she did what she could for the other inmates. Her faith was strengthened by her claim that each person is the very icon of God incarnate in the world. With this recognition came the need to accept the awesome revelation of God unconditionally, and to venerate the image of God and all of her brothers and sisters. On Holy Saturday, March 31st of 1945, Mother Maria was taken to the gas chamber. It is believed that she took the place of a Jewish woman who had been chosen for death. Just a week later, the camp was liberated by the Red Army. It's saints like Maria that show us that there are many ways to God and to serving our neighbor, which may or may not involve glasses of beer and cigarettes. But being a traditional monastic or living some sort of sequestered, uniquely pious life isn't required. While I hope and pray that we never face the kind of obstacles that Maria did during her lifetime, I hope that we can each, in our own way, learn to embrace the revelation that every person is an icon of God. Amen. Continuing in your bulletin or turning to page 358, let us stand together and reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God who is not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins and the life of the world to come. And the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found in your order of worship, or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light like perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And that we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by the witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable to the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Continuing in your bulletin or turning to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sins against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Give you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, my friends, peace. You know it's Pat's birthday today? It is Pat's birthday today. <laughs>
Eucharist prayer A begins in your order of worship on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks to Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you are greatly glorified in the assembly of your saints. All your creatures praise you, and your faithful servants bless you, confessing before the rulers of this world the great name of your only Son. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, to forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them to be, by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and 
serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia! Gifts of God, the people of God. Always. Nice. 